Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joyce Ng. And, and Joyce, we have we have big uh, news here on the pod front. Big, huge. Huge. As you might have noticed, if you've been watching or listening, our episodes are incredibly long. They are like brutalist length, killers of the flower moon length with no intermission. It, it feels like you live long enough. What is, the, what is the line in Dark Knight or when he's like, you either die hero live long enough to become the villain is that kind of it yeah like james cameron doing ai shelly now so and so i'm like boy we used to goof on these long movies what a junky stupid thing how long why is flower moon and i you hours? know i love a 90 minute movie and now we're doing flower moon length episodes of our show so like not great <laughs> so we decided joyce that we're going to take our beloved mailbag segments which is where we talk to you the listener or viewer and move them to a separate show yes so now you're gonna get two episodes wow two you're gonna get your own episode on fridays just so, you guys your questions and our answers our dumb answers so we usually record these on wednesdays which is today where we're recording if we're gonna record at a different time we'll let you know and then otherwise, just email us anytime at slugfest at and you'll have a whole show. Ask us anything and we'll just talk about it. That'll be Fridays. You can listen to yeah. it on the weekend, whenever you want. You know, like not to blame anyone, but it's really you guys like asking us all these questions and we just love answering them. Nonsense. And then love. that just elongated the show. Love, love the feedback. Uh, and we try to answer everyone. Yes, yeah, and the games, games. games several yeah. games. If you want to come up with a new game, if you're not Mike, you yeah. want to come up with a new game, do that. Uh, it's just going to open it up. We're going to open the space. So now we're just not going to do emails this week, right here in this episode. Excuse on this me. episode. Thursday. Now, mm -hmm. if you're watching tomorrow on Friday, when we're dressed exactly the same, we'll be That's doing yeah. uh, mailbag. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So slugfest at goldderby.com. And there's more changes maybe coming, Joyce. We'll add. We'll be doing add, adding things, hopefully, in the future. Maybe. This is step yeah, one. We'll see. Yeah. This is step one. Mm -hmm. This was a, a necessary fix. Yeah, because we we like have joked about this for like months. It's like this is so long. <laughs> we used to go, oh, I can't believe we're at Belfast length, and now it's like, oh, yes. we're at Brutalist length, and that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Now we're going to talk about there's a lot of uh, we were going to talk Golden Globes. We'll do that next week because there are so many actual category shifts this week or con confirmations, I guess, of things we maybe knew, but yeah. now we definitely know that it felt like we should just talk about those because that's what everybody was maybe chirping about online the news of the week we love the news yeah we so didn't big... get a we didn't get a late september um major move from s supporting actress to lead this year i mean like tilda happened but that was earlier but she wasn't a front runner like michelle williams and lily gladstone were considered to be the last two years so that's kind of sad it is but we did get one the other way i guess over the weekend i mean I guess it depends on where you started from. <laughs> but. So the big one was Saoirse Ronan, who had double potential, uh, two best actress contenders, right? With Blitz and The Outrun. Well, actually, Blitz, she moved to supporting actress, which is what most of the people had, su had suspected uh, for a while. And now yeah, it's I would say like um, moves might be the wrong term to use because it okay. was never confirmed that she was in lead. You know, I think a lot of people thought she would be. It's not like, um, Apple came out and was like, she will be in lead. And now we're like moving her to supporting. Um, we just didn't know at all. We right. were just making assumptions. And you know, what happens when you make assumptions? Um, but yeah, I was personally in the camp of assuming she was in supporting, just reading the log line of Blitz. I, when you hear it com compared to Lion, you think supporting. That was me. Yeah. I, I got to say, I, I don't want to give myself too much credit because I didn't know anything at the time. But when we did these, when we did our ridiculously early Oscar picks last year, when we had Blitz maybe coming out last year, I think I had Sersha in supporting actress when I did my picks. And then it was like, oh, so now look at that. I feel like uh, I was ahead of the curve. By 18 months. 18 months later, I was vindicated. Yeah. Siri play vindicated. Yeah. Um. So now... Uh, she has a contender in each category. So she's like obviously lead in the outrun and she's supporting in Blitz. So we've both seen Blitz. We can't talk about it yet, the actual movie. Not allowed. 
No, but uh, since her placement is confirmed, I suppose we can say that she is definitely supporting in the movie. This is not a borderline situation. Was the least surprising thing I ever read after seeing the movie. Yes. Yeah, I think that might be some of the theorizing afterwards too. Like she's only, she's actually a lead, but she's going supporting. So she doesn't split her own vote with the outrun in which she's an obvious lead. And I'm like, mm, it's not like that at all. And it's not like Kate Winslet, I don't believe either, with the reader no. in Revolutionary Road, which I've yeah. seen it compared to. Yeah. She's very much supporting because Blitz is much more, we can't talk about it, but just to talk about it, it's very much an like, ensemble it's a, Just read the log line. It's, it's about her, her son. Yes. Elliot Heffernan. Yes. Uh, star Introducing. Making performance. Yeah. Introducing Elliot Heffernan. Yeah. He, he's a, is a nine-year-old um, and he gets evacuated to safety during World War II, a Blitz. Um and things happen and he's trying to make his way home so it really just follows him uh yes and if you watch the trailer i think the trailer is pretty indicative of the movie i would say from what i saw in the trailer yeah but it is cut away in which they are featured prominently equally i guess maybe but it, again it's a trailer you know right it's like so so now she's supporting. So we don't have to worry about the outrun where she's just all alone for a lead. And I'm mm -hmm. sure people have really still predicting her pretty widely for the outrun. And I've- She's great at outrun. She's fantastic in the outrun. And I've considered it. Again, that category feels so- Best Actress is just always competitive. Very, very competitive. And so I had her in- Like we talked about this when we did our picks last week. If you made it through the two and a half hours. Uh, definitely, I had her in first place for a little bit. I think you did too. And now we neither one of us have her in- that's not to say I won't put her in uh, again, but I just felt like this other movies maybe are bigger or stronger. Now, maybe as they come out, maybe they're not actually, people don't like them. And then maybe she kind of moves in because no matter what, I think the outrun is a movie that people are like good movie, great performance. That's like the baseline. Yeah. And she might end up being a low nominee for it. Correct. So. Which she could be. She could be. And that's not, a death knell in Best Actress, like it might be in Best Actor, as we know. But, you know. So, and then for Supporting Actress, pretty wide open, which we've also talked about. It just it feels like it is cleared out. Well, Tilda went lead, which we talked about last week. So it opens up uh, an ostensible spot, I guess, if you assume. I think like people, like they they when they have like their their own predictions for a while they feel very comfortable with it and then in their mind they're like this is the locked four you know so if you have like your your own top four you might think like these are the ones that are in like no debate about it and i think most people have zoe saldana um daniel detweiler selena gomez and felicity jones yes and then i don't now, feel great about felicity jones we saw The Brutalist last week, which you, we can talk about, but we don't need to go into detail about it. But she's good. Loved it. The yeah. movie's great. She mm -hmm. comes in in the second movie because there's a movie and then the Yeah, after the intermission. She's after the intermission. Uh, and I thought she was really good too. And she has like great scenes. Like she has like mm -hmm. Oscar scenes. But then leaving the theater, Joyce, I was getting pushback from people who were like, Oh, I thought her accent was dodgy. Oh, this, oh, that. And I was like, man, watching it, none of this felt, I didn't feel any of this, but I was like, You're if that's still easily vibes, influenced by outside voices. Well, no, I'm I'm not saying I'm easily influenced. I still think she's great. But I was like, if that's the vibes, maybe the vibes are off and maybe she doesn't get in. I don't, I guess the thing I would say is like, I don't think she'd be anybody's number one. No, I don't think she's winning, but I think she's like probably in. Like. I, I, I think she's probably in, but she's probably like four. I guess what I'm saying is I think she's like four or five. So if there ended up being like a performance with like more passion, wherever this comes from, she could be at risk of missing. I guess I would say that about like all of the people in this category. <laughs> I don't think, except for like Zoe, I feel like is like the the most lock of locks a year. Not like a lock lock, but like of this category, she feels the most safe. Everyone else, I'm like, I don't, I couldn't see a world where they miss, including like Isabella Rossellini, she literally has one moment in Conclave. Yeah. And like, is that enough? I think it is based on the category, but if it wasn't, I guess I wouldn't be surprised. 
but you're basically also just arguing for felicity then like that's the whole sure. thing I'm, like I'm that's why like, i'm just like really like not that like who cares at this point but it's like it's so unformed <laughs> right and <laughs> at this and, point and so the idea is like, like the why brutalist... are we saying she can't get in <laughs> I, i'm not saying she can't get in i'm just saying like i would quite i don't if she didn't get in i wouldn't be surprised and I guess also, like, I feel like The Brutalist is a stronger Best Picture contender than some of these other movies we're talking about. So that was another reason why I left her in. But neither one of us put Sersha in after uh, the move, official move, though she is very much in play based on the odds. Yeah, has she moved into the top five since the, the confirmation? Let's see. Currently, she is one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh place. Okay. Now, I think this will start to fluctuate a little more. I'm Janae Ellis Taylor is still in third place for Nickel Boys. She's great in Nickel Boys, which is going to premiere at New York Film Festival this week. And I think it's going to go over gangbusters because it feels like the elite at New York Film Festival crowd will like really love it as it's like gearing towards its future as a New York Film Critics Circle winner in one or two categories. But I'm also like, I don't think Anjanae Ellis Taylor will stand out in those reviews and I can see her falling further. No disrespect to the performance or like anything. I just think like, Right now, she felt like uh, it feels like she was at early, early, like, oh, she's definitely getting in. When we did our ridiculously early picks, I think in March, we probably both had her in. And now well, I'm like, I think, I think in general, she is being predicted by everyone because former nominee and then, you know, origin last year right. happened. So I'm like, and she could also like get in. But I don't have her in having seen, I, I, I guess the argument would be like, well, she has not as much to, she doesn't have a lot to do, but neither does Isabella Rossellini. But I guess I was like, I thought Conclave would be like a, maybe a stronger acting claim because the performances in Nickel Boys, while good, are not the thing you're taking away from Nickel Boys. I think it's like the filmmaking because it's so arty. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't seen Nickel Boys yet, but yeah, I think Conclave is more uh, mainstream Broad appealing than Nickel Boys. But so. and then so Sersha in seventh, Lady Gaga in eighth choice for Joker, fully ado. Sure. Still waiting to see that one. Um, but you know what? Harlequin album. Hey. Listen to it. The little monsters are excited, choice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, why don't we stay on Best Supporting Actress? Because there were other category confirmations. I guess we could, we'll switch, but just because we're here, I thought, why don't we just continue? Because we had Amelia Perez confirmed as Zoe Saldana and Selena Gomez as supporting and Carlos Sofia Gascon as lead. This was not a surprise in the least. But yeah. now it's like officially official because Netflix, as you, you point out, put up their FYC site and then immediately took down a lot of these things. Yeah. So the FIC is uh, FIC site is still live. It's just a uh, some, some some information maybe went up a little. Too maybe, soon. but yeah. that's how we have we have now. Re this is all how it's a lot of a lot of FIC sites launched this week. Yeah, so and this is how it's all reflected in like the in our prediction center too. But so yeah, Zoe's been in the support. They're both in supporting. I never in my a million years, even though watching the movie, I think you can make a case. It always felt like this was going to be the breakdown, even from after Can to me. Yeah, like I think um you know like Zoe is is a lead in the movie but like strategically like this would be the play. Yeah. You know. So she's, I yeah. think she's you you haven't seen it yet. I'm going to see it again on Monday at New York Film Festival Choice. We're, We're going to see it together. Too. We'll be in the same room for Amelia Press. And I was like I think she's definitely like the entry character but obviously she's not the title character so maybe that's how you it just feels like having not seen it yet. It just feels like a, a favorite situation. A little bit, yeah. Like that's, that's like Emma point. is the lead of that movie, mm -hmm. and they also like she and Rachel Weisz went supporting for other reasons too, because they were both like, "We have Oscars, Olivia, go lead and get your Oscar," and she did. Um, none of these people have Oscars, but yeah, it kind of feels like that where it's like their like Carla's character is uh i guess like drives the story and it's like the the character it's kind of like challengers too it's like a lot of like the the narrative is around this central character even though like they they might not have the most screen time right know? exactly right uh so not surprised there and i have both of them in selena gomez and 
Zoe Saldana, and the other, obviously, Adriana Paz was the other actress supporting. She is very much supporting. She's had a much smaller part than the other yeah, two. Yeah, she was part of uh, the quadruple can shared win for Best Actress. Yes. Yeah. She has like two scenes and is a big factor more in the third act than obviously the first two, but she's very good, I thought, too. Um, So that was that. The other one was, I guess, oh, this one was one I think people were questioning for a while is his three daughters choice which you can watch right now on Netflix I still have not watched it again I'll probably watch it again I just haven't had time um I have not watched it again I saw it in July I think yeah yeah remember, Netflix got tried to get out in front of the tidal wave of fall festivals like, yeah and like Earl you know what they, they they did get it I mean it's it's one yeah. of the first like people can watch it now it it could build momentum like who knows I still think it could be a big player at SAG because of that yeah they love and, Netflix I gotta say, it's nobody I've spoken to has really been down on it. Yeah. So they're like the worst is like fine, and the best. The, is the like, worst is like it's like a play, which like it, it is. is like it's like structured like one, and it's like mostly taking place in this one apartment. So. And then the best are like this is one of the most emotional movies I've ever seen. Crying, cr- hysterical crying, uh, yeah. watching this movie. Uh, anyway, Natasha Leone, best actress contender. Not supporting actress. No. And then Carrie Coon, Elizabeth Olsen, best supporting actress. Sure. This to me opens up an absolute Carrie Coon supporting actress nomination at SAG. Like I actually probably predict her uh, for this movie. I don't even know like what I would have done with them. Like I, I haven't thought too deeply about it. Like even after having seen it, I was like, yeah, I don't know what to do here. Cause you can make an argument for various permutations i don't think i think the only one that i i wouldn't do would be lizzie in lead lizzie feels supporting yeah unless you do all three in lead which i don't think they would do at all you know and i think you can make the case that like natasha leone is the lead yeah and i think people have made that case and it kind of makes sense because again she's like the entry point character and like the kind of the story hinges on her relationship i feel like with the father and the other daughters and so like while it's not necessarily her pov i think it's like very much this is she's the main focus of the movie because of that like yeah and so I, it makes sense to me that said there was a world a, maybe a different year or whatever where this is like a clear like oscar nomination best supporting actress for natasha leone i think but it just seems like this year is so crowded Netflix has a lot of ladies this year too. <laughs> like a lot, as usual. Like it seems like they always do. But now they have the other one. With, well, just to piggyback, was Daniel Deadweiler confirmed supporting for the piano lesson, which also felt like something that people knew was going to happen. But when they, at least at Telluride, when the movie screen, everyone is like, "Wow, she's like the main character in the movie. Uh, she should probably be lead." But it was also like obvious that she was always going to be supporting to me as well. So like. Well, yeah. that's also like a borderline situation where you could make an argument for either category, mm-hmm. which again is like not the case for Sersha and Blitz, you know? Sersha is definitely supporting. None of these are borderline. These are all borderline. I agree. And I think you could say Piano Lesson is actually like John David Washington is the only lead act. He's the lead yeah, actor. And he's going lead. And he's going lead. He is like the focal point of the movie. It's like he is driving the story while I think Danielle is the heart and soul of the movie. To, to put that she's the heart we should get i got i got th- i think we should do that for every movie this year who's the heart and soul of the movie but danielle's the heart and soul of the lesson, so it makes sense uh i history daughters i think because there's so many movies like this, again this year because there's so many movies and so many performances and netflix in particular has so many actresses which we didn't even mention like obviously like maria right for angelina jolie and uh, like there's so many uh different people that they have to juggle uh I think that they should still get her in for at SAG. I think this will do really well at SAG, his three daughters. I just do. I don't know. They love Netflix. Um, I think like lead might be tricky at SAG, but I think at, at this stage, like supporting is definitely doable. You know, they could get kind of like um an Adam Sandler hustle type of nomination, right? And then like yeah. maybe not get in at the Oscars, you know, just like a SAG only type of thing um because like so yeah like I don't 
I don't know if like competitive is the right word for actress. Like it's like there's I feel like there's like I haven't counted, but maybe like eight to ten people who are like in the mix, right? And it's so hard to figure out the five right now in late September. Um, whereas like in supporting actress, it does feel like like there's a consensus four and then like a wide open spot and maybe that keeps changing throughout the season or maybe we just I don't know like the critics like back someone and that just becomes like the, the filler nominee I, well, I don't know but I mean with, in terms of like Harry Coon like we talked about this when we saw the movie and we've talked about it and a lot of people I've spoken to Natasha Leon got like a lot of the headlines and she is great in the movie but I think you're walking out like wow Carrie Coon's an amazing like no shit but like Carrie Coon's an amazing actor and like is really good like I thought she was like the best part of the whole movie and so I wonder if like like you're saying there it does feel like that supporting actress is flexible does the if she gets on in at SAG does the moment and like is there momentum building where end up she ends up just getting in even as a lone nominee as like a fifth supporting actress nominee Carrie Coon maybe I could see it I don't know like if I predict it. Only like I think she would need other things. Well, what if she gets other stuff? Like she could. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like she would need to get other stuff too. Because if you're just SAG only, then might you 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 probably just be <laughs> SAG only. True. So, um, but yeah, because she does kind of. I guess like it is kind of fitting that she isn't supporting in terms of how the the movie plays out because. In, in the movie, it's like she's parachuting in because they're, you know, awaiting the, it's like the, her, their dad's final days. And she's kind of just, she's the eldest and she's just kind of like taking over the space, like Natasha's apartment, right? Mm -hmm. So she's kind of, she, she, she has like super main character energy where she's kind of like announcing herself and she's like, I'm going to fix everything because um, Natasha like you're a fuck up like you know you're a mess you're just getting high all the time with your boyfriend and everything so she's like trying to get everything in order and um and you know and then obviously the end and you know they like figure their shit out um and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that like this you know she and Lizzie leave the apartment you know by the end of the movie they're not going to live there forever right and so that's going to be mad about this yeah something. like oh. Natasha is back in her own space like her sisters are out so she's like the main like she's the main character at the end yes so like she's in lead you know i would say like the one thing i would say in terms of sag and like for natasha like we are not going to do our sag predictions yet but i was just, i've just been thinking about this like we like a we know sag is like a preference that early and availability of screenings right like so like how they're and, seeing and things. netflix so like the best actress the, the best actress contenders like right now, the top five at SAG are Mikey Madison, Carlos Sofia Gascon, Angelina Jolie, Nicole Kidman in, for Baby Girl, and Amy Adams for Night Bitch. I think like Carla and Mar and Angie and Mikey could be pretty set just because of like they're getting out in front early. Like people are seeing these movies, and then the latter two are on Netflix, even though they're like later releases. Like okay, but I was like, is Baby like I'm like questioning whether. Like the baby girl and night bitch will screen widely. I think night bitch will, but I'm like, are these movies going to screen widely enough to get like SAG voters, even like the, like whatever, are they going to be able to see these? And then does like something like, like would Natasha Leone have a shot actually here as like the Adam Sandler type too, because like, Oh, maybe we didn't see hard truths, right? Like, or like the outrun even though i think they're getting out in front of that early too i don't know i'm just saying like i don't think it's like far-fetched i guess that she can well, get it saying it just they need to get the screeners to the nomcom they don't right. need to get it to like the whole right. no i know they need to get to the nomcom so it's like we just need to know What's when because like sometimes like the the nomcom people like you know post on instagram like oh look at these screeners i just got so then we know around when like the, the studios are getting the screeners out I to them and yeah, so like now, like the the calendar for SAG has uh, shifted a bit since COVID because they used to announce their nominees in December, you know, like a day after the Globes. Mm -hmm. Um, so so that meant like the the watching and voting window was shorter too because that was like you had to like vote like in November basically, like by like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um but now nominations are in january so they vote over christmas and that's like a longer break so they 
theoretically have more time to watch things. So like this year, the calendar is um, nomination voting opens December 16th and closes January 5th and nominations announced January 8th. So they could probably see this stuff. Yeah, because like also like all of these movies will obviously be out by right. December 31st because right. they have to be. Right. You know, so, it's not the same as the old calendar when they were announcing nominations in December. So they really did, did have to do a lot of SAG screenings for the nomcom mm -hmm. and really get their screeners out earlier. So those are still okay. I mean, I have them. I have like, I still have Amy in at SAG. I feel like she'll get in for SAG, but I don't know. Uh, what other categories did we get confirmed, Joyce? So those are the Netflix ones. Um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Piano Lesson. Yeah, I don't think any of that was a surprise yeah i think some people like maybe wanted danielle to go lead she could have i don't know i it's i mean in terms of like the strategy it feels like she's a much safer bet to get nominated in supporting this year than she yeah. would be in lead so if that's your strategy then that makes sense i think like we said i think you could make the art you definitely could watch the movie and say she's the lead um but if you said she was supporting i actually it's not like it's not an egregious bit of category fraud to me, at least. No, I, I think it's something, it's going to be one of the ones that people would just debate until the end of time, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but here, I think she'll get nominated. So it's like people will not care as much. Yeah. And then John David Washington, the only lead, and then the other, everyone else supporting SLJ, Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher, great. Future SAG oh. ensemble nominee, maybe here. Get us oh, there. I have a getting to ensemble. That's like such a SAG movie. <laughs> uh, um, and then, oh, I guess uh, we got another one that's confirmed, like Challengers. So Challengers is one people maybe keep coming back to. Is it this is another one that everyone will debate. But I think around. this is kind of what we both were assuming anyway, like Zendaya in lead and Josh O'Connor and Mike Feist in supporting. Makes sense to me, frankly. Yeah. Zendaya is definitely the lead. I me. think it's, a, it's another favorite situation. And the boys are supporting. They're vying they're, for her affection and her attention. Yeah, they're like, they're not leads. I, I think, I don't know. I, I, I'm I mean, happy I think, I think all three of them are leads, but for strategic purposes, I understand this. I think people are like people, I mean me, are still holding out hope in the dark recess of their mind that like Josh O'Connor could get something from somewhere. I don't believe that's going to happen though, sadly. I guess we'll see. Um, he'll probably get like a, a Critics' Choice nomination. Critics' Choice nomination. Does he get it at the Globes? I don't know. I mean, they have six spots now. So he gets in. Does he get in Critics' Choice? Is getting in the Globes? Does he get in at SAG at all? Probably not. No, probably not. And like Globes and Critics' Choice are not industry, you know. So. And does he get a critic? Some critics groups, maybe. Regional critics. Like a group. runner runner up. LA Film Critics Association runner up. Oh God. What do you think they're gonna do with their like joint wins? They're gonna do like two women, two men, a man and a woman. Let's women think a look. I mean, this year I would say like the what they do like Adrian Brody and like a woman. I think Mikey Madison's got one of those locked up. So like I feel Mikey like he feels more like New York. I think she's got both these locked up to me. I think she'll win New York too. I think Mikey wins New York and this in LA as one of the performers. I think the other LA person could be like Daniel Craig or Saoirse Ronan. Saoirse's won New York twice, I think. I don't think she would win for Outrun, but um, I guess she could. And then I really like her in New York. So, I mean, I could I see like Marion Jean Baptiste winning one of them. Certainly, that could be like probably like National Society, and then Brody, for sure, and at least one of these. Um, yeah, that's still like too much. Who is work. the? Who is the Josh? Uh, I'm sorry. Who is the the Charles Melton in the New York? Who Who is the New York one where it's like the New York always has the fun one, right? Where it's like, oh, we gave. This is what I asked you like three weeks ago. Yeah, I know, but like. So it's not like who is the Kiki Palmer or the Tiffany Haddish of this year for them? I don't know who's like like fun and like exciting. 
like like new to like prestige awards that people want to coronate new to prestige awards people i mean does mikey madison count like not really no because it's like she's the star of the can palm dior winner so it's not like not like it a needs surprise. to be someone like like who's probably not going to win the oscar you know what i mean <laughs> somebody who's not going to win somebody who's like or might not even get nominated like charles malton oh well i mean is it like demi Moore for the substance could be like that could be like the big like lady gaga type win yeah or margaret qualley like I could see that, but that would feel like less like that's like I mean no disrespect to Mara Quayle, but like she's not like Demi Moore, you know what I mean? Like Demi Moore would be like, hey, look, we gave Demi Moore an award. She came to our dinner. You you got you want them to come to the dinner a month later. So Demi Moore is I think that's a strong one. I would say Demi Moore, Daniel Craig to me is another one. That's a possibility. He's very famous. Yeah, but it's not because because like Daniel, you kind of like expect him to win awards one day you know what i mean true it's like no one had like charles like you know like january 2023 like winning awards i i think you can i think on paper it's like selena gomez but i don't think they, they'll go for that kind of performance though or movie no so there's too many people i think in the new york film critic circle who don't like it so i was like that'll probably not happen uh i mean it could be like natasha leone She's she's a New Yorker, like. I'm like, look, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the list here. This is this is why these episodes are two and a half hours. Uh, Drew Starkey, I guess. Harris Dickinson. They're not like they're not like the Lady Gaga, Tiffany Haddish, Kiki Palmer types, though. No. So, I guess we'll see. I, I, <laughs> I think Demi Moore makes sense, though, frankly. Uh, yeah, she feels kind of more like like a J Lo win when she won L A. I think I can see her winning New York. Yeah, yeah. Well, like people expected J Lo to win New York, and she didn't, and then she won L A. So, so anyway, what if J Lo um, wins again for Unstoppable? Hey, we haven't seen it yet, but I can't wait. Love J Lo. Let's go! Another supporting actress nomination campaign incoming. I'm I'm here for it. So, uh, then the other last one was uh, Kieran Culkin for A Real Pain. Uh, confirmation on supporting uh, searchlights fyc site <laughs> not surprised at all no but another one where you could be like he should be in lead you this know. is a movie that you have not seen yet i believe uh i'm seeing it tomorrow so so when you're watching this joyce will have already seen it i watched it on my laptop at sundance you, you should come tomorrow sundance. i can't come tomorrow and i keep wanting to see it again because i was like when i saw it at sundance at sundance in quotes uh, I was like, good movie, very solid. And I thought like, it's like a typical like Sundance Tribeca indie movie that is elevated because like, I think the performances are really good. I actually really love Jesse Eisenberg in it. And it's like not, it's not like the typical indie bullshit. Like it feels like it has like something to say, right? So I was like, oh, this is a good, it's like a very good movie. And I enjoyed it. And I watched and I was like, this will get Kieran Culkin like a lot of buzz and probably like a spirit nomination. And now it's like, he's going to win an Oscar maybe. And also the movie should be in best picture. And I was like, does that say more about the year or more about the movie? And I can't figure out. I was like, I should really watch I this think again. It's both. I think it's both. <laughs> okay. Cause I was like, I really should watch this again. Cause I'm like, did I, am I, is it a blind spot to me? Cause I was like, it's good. But I never once while watching it was like, this is definitely getting a best. I was like Kieran and the script. I thought like, we're both always going to play. And I still think that, but I've definitely seen people more and more being like, Hey, this is actually getting for best picture. And maybe it will. And I think I that's that's uh, that conversation has accelerated uh, now that we're you know post fests and we're tr still trying to figure out the ten you know as we should be really. Yeah. Um. And like you know you know certain things didn't like live up to expectations and have like in our minds fallen out or fallen lower. Th this is a year yeah so, this is a year where so then it's like what about a real pain that everyone saw in january and liked, and liked you yeah. know everyone so, liked it i don't know anybody didn't like it i do get so the the trailer dropped today wednesday yes so they they do a really good job of uh highlighting kieran in it too with a also a poke quote hmm. from it but just he gets kind of like um 
like a lot of splashy moments throughout the trailer and like jesse gets one too uh at the end but they they show like the the dinner table mm. scene when he talks about like um how envious he is of of kieran's character in a lot of ways you know so it's a moving trailer so and i think they are definitely like ramping up with like the promo it comes out november 1st so it, it's now become one of the priorities for searchlight i would and imagine Searchlight is good at the stuff you know so you were an early adopter because I think you had it in Best Picture before anybody I know took it seriously. So I was very impressed that you were probably right to have at least taken it more seriously as Best Picture contender than Listen, I did. It was just, I did it because it was like, I know it's seen and it was uh, snapped up by Searchlight for $10 million. So at least I have data on this. I don't currently have it anymore. I think this was back in March when I put it in. <laughs> and it has, and it has a, a legit potential win in an, an acting category, which I feel like it will help buttress it's content it's bona fides right as a best picture contender i guess i would say like the bottom of we've talked about i I think i feel more and more confident about like the top six and less and less confident about the bottom four and i just gonna we all had this we had the same 10 we were doing this last week and i was like man i have like i'm way in on the the top six which i think no matter how you have them ordered would basically be anora uh amelia perez conclave the Brutalist, Dune, and even Sing Sing. I remain very bu- bullish about Sing Sing because I think the people, like we talked, people who love Sing Sing, love Sing Sing. It's their favorite movie. And I've gotten a lot of more even comments even on our YouTube page, Joyce. A lot of people being like, my favorite movie of the year when we were talking about it last week. So I was like, this is still in. And then the rest, I am just like, I have no earthly idea. I, I still have the same ones we had. Gladiator, September 5, Blitz, and Nickel Boys. And I'm like, if you told me none of those made it in, I would not be surprised, I guess. Yeah. So I'm not going to do anything to that. No. You, you you like to change things more than I do, more, I, more, more frequently than I do. I, the only thing I changed, take this for what you will. We can't talk about it. But you'll recall last week for Best Director, I had Sean Baker, Brady Corbet, Edward Berger, Jacques Arniard, and Steve McQueen. And we talked about, well, be, I think there's a name. Who's the name brand guy who's going to get in? Or gal? Uh, and you had Ramel Ross there on the passion. And I was like, I think I'm going to keep McQueen. And now I have Denny Villeneuve. Well, Dune also, uh, stepping on the gas, bringing it back. They had two screenings, uh, over the weekend. We talked about this last week. They, you know, somehow scheduled or cleared, uh, Timmy and Austin's and Zendaya's schedules and Denise to get them to do two screenings here on Saturday um and now denny is getting the the fake gotham director tribute thing so, so. We, we love the gotham awards great yeah. show invite us invite us again i would love to go i went last year choice you should go too. bleaker street invited me last year not sure oh, if so so can can they just get us a hard truth screener don't know um <laughs> but i was like oh uh it would be great to go again if you're watching this uh, but I was like, I love their fake awards. And so, so far we have the piano lesson getting one, I think like, a, like, like the ensemble thing. Yeah, sure. Sure. And now we have Denny getting the director tribute because nothing's as indie film and Gotham spirit. Well, I mean, you remember like all the tributes June. last year to Maestro, Killers of Flower Moon, yes. Air, you know, really good indie so movies. many last year. Yeah. And so Denny, I'm like, De- they're doing the full core press for Denny. I think that helps. I think what helps is that Warner Brothers, his lineup has really clarified. Yes. That's so a nice I, word. Nice, so, nice word. So it's really clarified and it's Dune part two or bust. And so let's go with Dune and let get Danny in. And I think he would get in now. I'm like, let's go. Uh, I, 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 I put him in as my fifth. Cool. Can I, I'll just read you um, last year's uh, Gotham uh, tributes. I love these. Okay. So Maestro received the cultural icon ampersand creator tribute. I love the ampersand here. It's great. Barbie. Remember Barbie? Yes. Barbie received the global icon ampersand creator tribute. Okay. Pillars of the Flower Moon received historical icon ampersand creator tribute. Ferrari, remember that one? Received icon, just icon ampersand creator tribute for innovation. Okay. So what is going to get these this year? I don't know. Well, I have two more. Rustin <laughs> received icon ampersand creator tribute for social justice. Okay. And Air received visionary icon ampersand creator tribute. Okay. So I mean they can make up new ones. It doesn't have to be these. The Gotham one for piano lesson is which? Uh piano lesson is getting the ensemble tribute. Okay. 
I think that's what. So yeah, they might not even use these names again. So what is Amelia Price? Let's just go through the movies. I mean, I can tell you right now. Like, okay, Amelia Price is going to get like the, I don't know, social change one? Or can they come up with something new? It was, it was social justice. Iconic mm. creator tribute. for. I don't know that. That's not going to fit. But maybe they yeah. do like, how about like some like international idea or something? Because it's like, so it's an international production. I guess uh, like Sing Sing could be like social justice. Certainly. And I thought the Brutalist could be the Flower Moon one, historical or whatever. But it's not, I mean, it, it's it not is, real. <laughs> it's not, it is real. It's just fictionalized characters yes. in a real, like it's and everything in it is real. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I don't but think it's not, a, or, it's not like uh, based in history. Like, what about September 5 for that one? Sure. Or Nickel Boys. Nickel Boys could do that one too. That's also fictional, but like real. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they're based on like real things. Uh, I, I, all I'll say is I feel like at least five or six of these best picture contenders is going to be represented at the Gotham Awards. What's the Barbie this year? Is it Gladiator? Global icon. <laughs> I mean, well, that was the <laughs> what was the, the biggest movie this year. I mean, they're already giving one to Dune. They're giving it to Denise. Dune gets the director one, but there's got to be like, is it Inside Out 2? Does that make it in? Wild Robot? One Wild Robot? Oh, how was One Wild Robot? We didn't see it yet. It comes out this week. Why didn't so you go to a screening? I didn't go to a screening. They never got back to me. But I did see uh, uh, Transformers 1. Did she like that one? She did. Okay. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just did straight up. Know? I didn't think it was very good. But uh, she enjoyed it and wanted to buy the toys when we left. So that was cool. good. Uh, I'll tell you what, not surprised. The theater was uh, it was sparsely attended on a lovely Sunday morning. So mm. not surprised the box office was underwhelming for that one. Sad. Um, but oh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, still doing well. Maybe it could win Global Icon. I think Warner Brothers, like I said, clarified. It's all about clarification on Dune Part 2. Uh, <laughs> the other stuff, we have two more things, I guess, to talk about before we go. Uh was A24 scheduled these movies, The Brutal oh, yeah. and Queer Choice. Mm -hmm. So A24, I mean, God bless them trying to balance this, but they have many, many movies this year to uh, organize. And so they scheduled Queer in a limited release for November 27th. Mm -hmm. and Which is the, the same day as uh, that Netflix uh, scheduled Maria. Correct. In a limited release. Maria comes out then on Netflix, I think, December 11th. Mm hmm totally unsurprised because when you looked at the netflix award slate they had nothing in december so it was like clearly like this was going to be december and that's get the that gets the maestro spot i guess for them right wasn't maestro december Maestro was uh, december 20th right on netflix yeah and then uh the brutalist gets a december 20th limited release yes it's very uh zone of interesty so i'm hoping it's more zone of interest than less iron claw because iron claw they Biffed, I feel like, on just in terms of like I great thought, box office. Yeah, but I think that that they were kneecapped because it wasn't ready to even be seen until November. So that's this is totally different. Like we've already seen the Brutalist. It, <laughs> if Iron Club was released this year, do you think it would be more? It would be in play, or would it not be? A twenty four just has so many movies. I think to be. Considered. I think it would be talked about the same way, but probably still come up short. I agree. That's a bummer because that was a really good movie, I think. Yeah. Um, but like you said, sometimes movies can just be good. They don't have to win awards. Yeah. Uh, I'm so curious about, we'll see what Queer does. Uh, it's a New York Film Festival next week. And then like we'll start screening more. Um, I'm very curious about The Brutalist just because I'm like, how is this going to exist in real movie theaters? How are real people going to experience this movie? It's Tell me if you've had this experience since we saw it last week. Um Everyone who has asked me about the movie, they are surprised uh, when I say that uh, I liked it and like it I, It didn't feel like three hours long to me because like they know that I like short movies. I'm like, no, like it's like the pacing is really good and the intermission obviously helps, but it really it, it's structured well. It just flows smoothly and like you don't really feel that I like I didn't feel that runtime at all. 
Not a single lick. I didn't even look at yeah. my phone once. It, it is definitely most Oppenheimer coded in that regard, where it's like Oppenheimer is a three hour movie. Yeah. And I think you're just like, it cooks. Flower Moon yeah. is a three and a half hour movie. And you're like, it feels like I'm watching this for four days. And brutal I saw that three times in the theater. <laughs> I had to watch it three times because I was like, what am I missing? <laughs> I realized the answer is this is nothing. it's it's your new matrix. I just couldn't. I, that was one where I was like, I'm really a lot of marinating on Flower Moon. And now I realized not for me, maybe uh, not in terms of my Marty uh, faves, but uh, Brutalist, I would definitely see again because I really enjoyed it and it flies to me. And I wonder, but I was like, how is this going to like at, a, at the AMC? Like down the block, is this going to play with this freaking intermission where it just is a static screen for 15 minutes? Well, you know, they, they can go to the bathroom. So I, I just, I'm like, I can't wrap my head around how real people are going to experience this movie. And maybe they're, and also like so much of it was like the 70 millimeter like experience, like watching it on film. Obviously, there are a lot of theaters. This Nolan did this with Oppenheimer and it became like a big event where you could show uh, there's a, a few movie theaters, obviously, around the country where this is going to be like a hot ticket. I feel like if the brutalist is at like all the New York theaters that like in LA that are like capable of screening 70 millimeter, it's going to be sold out for like the whole run in those early, like last yeah. week of Well, the that's, year. that's why I think this is like, I mean, I always assume it would open in limited, but like, I think it also has to, because I think the people who want to see it will go see it on December 20th, like opening weekend, right? Like those right. are like the cineasts, Oscar nuts, they will go see it right and then they'll it'll probably have good pta the opening weekend right mm -hmm. um and then it'll be able to expand in january especially after it starts getting nominations for things yeah. right to give you yeah. that into marketing yeah. um and then january 17th ask for nominations and they could just start expanding after yeah. that and then and then like that might draw in more casuals and normies into like oh what is this like three and ever a movie with adrian brody mm -hmm. that just got like seven oscar nominations um, and it's like, you know, maybe it just won a globe or something, you know, and like, then they want to see it, even though they see the runtime and it's really long, but maybe someone who has seen it has been like, oh, it's, it's, it's really good. And you don't feel it. And there is an intermission. It's not like Killers of Flower Moon where there wasn't one, <laughs> you know? So like, I don't think it was ever going to be opening wide. And I think that would have been terrible for it. Cause I think that would be when you would just get like headlines saying like it flopped. Cause like, obviously casuals are not going to see this opening weekend. I, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. I guess the, the play is probably like it's There Will Be Blood, right? Like that was a December, similarly, like a limited release. And like, I remember seeing that opening weekend, like a schmuck and like loving it. And like, then it was like, normies will eventually see this, but it's like really great for the New York, LA crowd. I guess then with terms of queer, I'm a little not concerned, but I'm like, it feels like that has the potential to get, it's already probably a limited audience. Again, another long movie and like not as long as a brutalist and like maybe a topic that not as widely embraced i guess as like other movies not that the brutalist is either but i guess i was like is it like i feel like that's a weird date there's no other place really they could have dated it like it clearly clearly had to be end of november but will then it get lost when brutalist comes out i guess or does it even matter i mean it's opening four weeks ish before right brutalist so i mean i think you know because brutalist is ostensibly at this point stronger than queer i think it would have overshadowed the conversation at some point anyway you know mm -hmm. so um yeah i think that was like the only good window for it and uh yeah i'm curious too to see how it does um especially after like the not exactly like glowing like the, the reviews were fine out of Venice, you know, but I know people expected them to be better. I, I think the strategy this year, just in terms of New York Film Festival, for the films that are going or were selected, it could not have worked out better to me because I'm like, Nickel Boys is the opening night. I feel like, again, at Telluride, there were people who really loved it and people who were like, I don't know what to make of this. I don't know if Telluride was the right place for that movie. <laughs> and I think like we talked about, I think it was like, hey, we're going to do, it's like a re let's rerun Moonlight and it didn't really work yeah. with the crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's so much more art. I, it's just, it's not so much more arty. It's just so much more challenge. I think it's just more challenging than Moonlight as a watch because of the way it's presented. Not that the material is challenging, but like, or more challenging, but just the visuals of it are such a, a leap. Um, but anyway, Nickel Boys, I think will play great in New York Film Festival. I firmly believe that it'll be like masterpiece shit coming out of the PNI and the opening night. 
uh, Room Next Door, I think, is like locked in to play great here at New York Film Festival. And similarly, Queer, I think, will play really well with that crowd. So I feel like all of those movies that maybe you're like, were like, it's hard to say like Room Next Door was like mixed because it won the Golden Lion. But I do think the reviews were not like totally yeah, over it's the another top. case where people just expected, again, like masterpiece type of tweets and stuff. Yes. And they didn't get those. Yeah. So I'm like, all of those, I think, will get a real big bump from New York Film Festival uh, because of the crowd and because of like the types of people who like movies and the types of movies that do well in New York, New York Film Festival, like those types of movies, I would say. The more challenging uh, movies than you would see at like TIFF or Telluride. So I feel like that'll be good for these movies um, to get that bump. And then we'll see like how, so like Queer, I'm not writing off yet in other categories. So I think Daniel Craig is still its strongest, obviously, option. Yeah, um, I guess this also kind of goes back to like, what are they going to do to reignite the flame for Sing Sing while they're juggling these two new movies? Well, we, we got them with the Gotham Awards, Joyce. You know that's happening. And just write it down. I'm, I'm pre-writing it down. I'm writing it down on my note ledger. Here. Social justice. Social justice, Gotham yeah. Awards. Uh, there's this, uh, so I feel like that'll get it back in. I think it'll organically get back. I, like, that's the thing. I wonder if, like, do you actually need to, like, for what it's going to get nominated or what we assume it would get nominated for, which are Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Screenplay, those four. How much work do they actually need to do to get it back in the conversation? Because I feel like, like, Coleman Domingo, like, it feels like almost a lock for three SAG nominations, Ensemble. Coleman and Clarence Macklin, I just would feel very, con like, I don't know how much work you need to do more than to get them in, especially if the nomcom has seen it, which I'm assuming they have. Like, it just feels like they'll get in. Yeah, but it's, it's I think it's about, like, reaffirming that they are in, because obviously it's not, like, I mean, it's not, like, top two right now, you know? Like, it's, it's so, um, and yeah, like, the actors, it's, themselves like maybe could win i think some people have fallen off of coleman um since like the brutalist you know and like all these other movies have been screened and um i think clarence might still be in first maybe i don't know but I mean, sag let me look or um but i think it's like if if you said that like sing sing got zero nominations in january i think people would be upset but i would also be like you know in retrospect like given like the rollout and how it just felt very like minor the conversation over the summer with it and and then like a24 also had these other movies like in retrospect like it's i guess it's not that surprising it ended up getting goose egged you know so i think it's kind of just like reminding people that like this movie exists and um it's a very easy watch very like uplifting life affirming you know, and like, you know, like Coleman, great campaign or Hill campaign, you know, we know I, Hill campaign. So I, I, guess, I think it's just like reminding people that it's it exists and like to solidify those spots. I I think that's true. But I was also like, I mean, if we're like, we're just going back to like the real, a, a real pain where I was like, it feels like now it's being, like you said, maybe but more the real pain hasn't, been, hasn't opened yet. So. I understand. But I'm like, people are coming back. It's not open, but a lot of people have already seen it for months because it was at Sundance, right? Like, obviously, like general audiences haven't, but it's not like it's been hard to see because it was at Sundance and Telluride in New York and all these different places. But I was like, I guess for that, like Sing Sing to me is like, to me, it's safe because like, as these other movies have fallen off, like you're kind of running out of things to put in. You know what I mean? Like, it just is like, well, we know that people like this movie, even though it kind of died obviously um i don't know I, I i keep going back to i, I think i coleman domingo when it came out was like you know they're in it for like the long haul i forget where i saw that headline maybe vanity fair or something or it's like this is they're not like i mean he like, definitely is and i think the whole i think they are so i think they're probably playing it right and i wonder how much work they need to like i guess there's a difference between like is it win competitive versus dumb i think the nominations because of how the season is shaken out are pretty solid but i don't think it's yeah i think you can say that for sure i mean like i have it getting in all those four places right, right? i'm not going to take it out anytime no. soon but nothing is guaranteed so True. it's like i think it's like awareness that you're not actually that strong or competitive mm -hmm. and it's just kind of it's just like reinforcements right 
you know. Uh, all right. So Joyce, that's it. So if you're watching this, email us at slugfestigolddurber.com. We're going to start doing our mailbags again on Fridays. Can't wait. Yeah, same clothes on Friday. You're not going to, it's going to be the same thing. We'll maybe work on this at some point, but not now. We're not doing a costume change. No, I'm not doing that. Maybe, should I put a hat on? Uh, no, I'm not doing that either. So get us our emails at slugfestigolddurber.com. And yeah, I'll see you. See you later. Bye, Joyce. <laughs>